Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Gaming on Caffeine. My name is Isaac, and we are back playing some mod sauce here on Isaac Island. Now, last episode, we set up this unlimited obsidian generator over here, which was using water from our unlimited water source outside and lava from the lava fabricator together in the Ignis extruder to produce us some obsidian. Now, this was all working well and good until we got to about a stack because I logged on not so long ago and found that we had no power whatsoever. This lava fabricator here chews through power like there is no tomorrow. If we uh, if we turn this on real quick, you'll see how fast it just starts to uh, to drain through this stuff. We'll wait till the idle ticket zero and then it will just like destroy that 16,000 RF and then it will start to pull out all of the redstone flux that is stored in the generators here you can see it's just sort of pulling and pulling so much redstone flux and if we have a look you can see we are losing it very quickly uh, it is pulling it quite fast from these guys but it does eat up a ton of power now the problem is that i came back onto the server i had a look this thing was empty this thing was empty and therefore our vat was empty which is not a good sign because when the vat's empty that means that it's going to stop turning zombie brains and sugar into the nutrient liquid which means that the generators are going to stop working which means we end up in a bit of a bad loop to where we're never getting any power which is not good uh, our system that we have at the minute requires at least a little bit of power in the vat in order for the system to work so if we completely run out of power we're in a bit of a pickle and today i want to fix that i want to set up a separate kind of pseudo backup source of power sort of thing i guess uh, not really backup i guess but just sort of another source of power and i was thinking about it i was thinking well we could make dynamos the standard stuff we could like get a lava unlimited lava source going and use magmatic dynamos and stuff like that but I thought, you know what, we've done, we, up until now, we've been a little bit wacky. We've got a bit of a wacky power source. We've done some different stuff. We haven't used, uh, really, thermal expansion machines too much just yet. Uh, got a bit of mechanism going. So I thought, what else can we use? What can we use that's a little bit different? And I thought, you know what, we have a ton of potatoes. We have quite a few. Well, I say a ton. We've got a stack and a half. We have quite a few potatoes. What can we do with potatoes to make us power? And as it turns out, we can, in fact, use potatoes to make us power, which is kind of insane. Uh, you also notice that we've got actually full up on bones, which I think is why this is backed up. Yeah, you'll see this thing's uh, holding 11 bones, which is holding the whole thing up. We're also really close to being full up on arrows as well. So we should probably get some, uh, some upgrades going on these barrels soon. Uh, you can get upgrades, which will up that to 120 eight stacks which uh, is kind of insane but uh, would also be kind of cool but uh, anyway what i've done between episodes is i've gone ahead and i've spent a bunch of time carving out a another room for another farm that being this one around here and we'll get to this one in just a second but uh, what we're going to work on today is we are going to work on the automation of loaded potato i think it's skins if i type in potato uh, we're going to work on getting these guys over here. Loaded baked potatoes. These things are fairly easy to make. It's a, bu a buttered potato, which is butter and a baked potato, which is just a smelted potato. And I'm probably going to say a lot of potato in this episode. Uh, we need cheese, which is just milk, salt, and a pot, which is actually incredibly easy to get, uh, considering we can use soy milk, which we'll come back to in a bit. And then it's some co cooked pork chops, which I thought were going to be a hard time, but we can also use firm tofu, which which again is going to be a, a key point of today. So what are we going to use this massive farm in here for? Is it going to be for potatoes? No, we're not going to grow any potatoes in this room uh, as of just yet. Instead, we are going to set up a soy farm, soybean farm, and we are going to use some soybeans. Now, uh, when we when it came to farming, I thought, what can we do? We could set up uh, another forestry farm like we have in here. We could set up a mine factory reloaded farm, again, planter, harvester, stuff like that. But I thought, you've seen that before. We've done that stuff before. Let's try something new. Because, again, <laughs> we're kind of all about uh, the wacky stuff in Mod Source. We're going to try and push the boundaries uh, and do some new stuff. So, I decided to go ahead and, and use a new mod that I actually haven't played with before called Better Chests. Now, uh, in order for this to work, we need an adjustable chest, which is fairly easy to make it's just a chest and some cobblestone and then in order to get this thing to farm what we're going to need is we're going to need some of these upgrades the first one being an energy upgrade which doesn't look too bad actually we need some redstone uh, repeaters which is just some redstone torches we need about four of those we're gonna need some blocks of coal again not too big of a deal one two three four of those and then a an upgrade case again not too big of a deal boom and boom what are we missing we are missing these capacitors boom boom 
Nice. Okay, so we can take you, and that gets us an energy upgrade. The reason we need this is because the planter uh, upgrade requires an energy upgrade, and the harvester upgrade also requires an energy upgrade. So, we are going to need three of each of these, which is pretty expensive, actually. So, for this to work, we need, like, four of any life uh, and some iron hearse. So, we're going to need a bunch of iron hearse. So, I'm counting one, two. These are stack either. So, one, uh, two, three... Four, that gets us one and then we're gonna need five six seven eight so that gets us another this is a lot of iron we're going through here the nine ten eleven come on eleven and twelve wow i'm surprised we had that many sticks that's kind of uh, kind of impressive and then boom i don't really want to use my aluminium or baby bushes do we have any saplings that we could use we do we have 122 work saplings do these work they do nice so we should be able to make three ah oh, what are we missing really uh, oh, yeah, we need 16 hearts. Oh, my gosh. Okay, one, <laughs> two, three, and four. There we go. A bit of uh, bad maths there by me. But then we can go ahead and boom. And that gets us our fourth uh, set of planting upgrades. Now, what we're going to do with these is we're going to head downstairs into our little uh, farming room, which is this guy around here. And we are going to throw down this chest smack bang in the middle over this water sauce block. We're going to put this guy here. And what we're going to do with this is all you got to do to add an upgrade is just right click, boom, that now has the energy upgrade. And then from there, you can add a different upgrade. So the planter upgrade, boom. I actually think I made one too many. I think we needed three, not four. But uh, basically, uh, any upgrade by default, or at least the planter and the harvester upgrade, will affect a 5x5 five five area. So it'll go uh, two out in each direction, to be more simple. So it'll go here, one, two, three, four, five. Two, three, four, five, two, three, four, five. And then for every one that you add after that, it will go two further out. So if we add another one, boom, it's going to go an extra two out. And then if we add a third one, it's going to go that final two out. So we did make one too many, but uh, I'm sure we'll find a use for that somewhere. And now if we were to throw in uh, some soy seeds, soybean seeds, soybean seeds, wow, geez, <laughs> can't talk there. That should go ahead and plant that down somewhere in the near vicinity. But, oh, there we go. Where's it gone? It is over here. There we go. So that's gone ahead and planted that down. You can see it's gone all the way over here. So it is going to reach uh, the whole of the area. Now, luckily for us, we have a ton of bone meal. So what I'll probably do uh, is cut away in a second and get a bunch of this stuff going. And also the cool thing uh, is that we can actually throw uh, these in here and they will get planted as well, which is quite nice. So... Currently, we have this set up to automatically plan anything that gets put into that chest, which is kind of cool. Now, what we need to do is set it up to automatically harvest whatever gets thrown into that chest. Now, the way that we're going to do that is pretty much the same. We're going to go ahead and make three harvesting upgrades. These things are a ton of wheat and an upgrade case. And as it so happens, look at this. We have a ton of wheat. We actually have filled this thing up. Let me have a go. Uh, ooh. I think we might have just missed that, because I think this is probably backed up down here. Let's go have a look. Yeah, I could see some fully grown wheat. So this thing was probably... Look at this. Look at this. We've got another four stacks down here. Jeez. We have a lot of wheat. And we've still got 39 fertilizer uh, out of that initial stack that we put in quite a while back. So um, that stuff really does last a heck of a long time. And I really think we've got a lot of appetite left as well. So we should be fine for, uh, for, for fertilizer. Uh, anyway, let's go ahead and do this. Boom. And, oh, look, we got some potatoes already. And then we will go ahead and take one, two, three of these. And this works in exactly the same way. Adding one does a five by five. And adding the uh, the extra ones adds an increase of two all around. And, and therefore, if we add three, like so, one, two, three. You can have a maximum of five, by the way, of all of these. As you can see, uh, it says uh, max upgrade per chest is five, five. So you can have up to five of these. So we could have taken it two more out and then two more out after that. But uh, this is the same size as all the rest of the room. So I thought we'd leave it at this. So now we have a chest that is fully capable of automatically planting and harvesting these soybeans. And I'll go ahead and grab some bone meal just to prove this to you here. If we grab a bunch of you. And turn these into bone meal. This is going to get us a heck of a lot of bone meal. Boom. There we go. And what we can do is we'll head back in here. And we'll do this. And as soon as that becomes mature, that is going to go ahead and harvest the thing. There we go. Look, harvested it. Turned it into and then just planted it straight back down. And we got four more, which is kind of cool because you, you harvest this thing and you get... Okay, <laughs> we didn't that time. Usually you get four back. Is what you should get. If I break that, there we go. So you get three back that time. Sometimes you get three, sometimes you get four, apparently. But we can go ahead and we can throw those back in there. 
And this is going to do the same thing over and over and over again. Uh, so we can just grow all these up like this. It's going to go ahead and harvest them. And it's going to go ahead and plant them down. So it works kind of like a fully automatic farm. As you assume it would. Now I think what it's doing here is it's going to, it's, it continually scans. So the bigger the farm you have, the longer it's going to take to find fully grown crops. And, and deal with them. So it's not just going to scan the whole thing. And then scan it again, scan it again. I think it goes through and scans like that. So that might be why it's taking a while. But uh, that's going to go ahead and do that. And now, what we need to do with this stuff is we need to be able to turn these soybeans into that tofu that we needed for the potatoes. So, we pretty much have everything we need from the better chest mod over here. So, let's head on back upstairs and let's get working on some other stuff from Pam's Harvest Craft. So, if we want to be able to make this potato, I'll type in potato again. Here we go. This guy here, this uh, beast of a potato, we need to have uh, some cheese, a butter potato, and either a cooked pork chop or the firm tofu. We're going to go for the firm tofu. Now, unfortunately, NEI doesn't seem to have a recipe for this thing. But uh, thankfully, I do know how to make it. If we go ahead and get ourselves some presses, which is a block from Pam's Harvest Craft. Uh, it's actually a really cool block if we go ahead and make... We're going to make three of these. So one, two, three, four, five, six... Wow, we're doing really well on, uh, on just having things in here that we can use today. And we'll take that, and that gets us three presses. And then what I'm going to do is I will go ahead and throw these down somewhere in here. Let's think. Um, I'll put it there, there, and there. Because what we're going to do is, in order to get the stuff out of this adjustable chest, we're going to have a transfer node on top which we'll go ahead and go and make. And I'll probably make another four. Let's grab some ender pearls real quick. We'll probably make four more of those transfer nodes because we're going to need quite a few of those today. So let's go ahead and make a few more of these. We'll throw you in there. And let's just type in node because it's easier. Do we have any transfer nodes? Oh, wow, we do. Okay, never mind. We've got three already. Uh, oh, the liquid transfer nodes. Oh, that's a shame. Okay, let's go ahead and make boom. Uh, we need some pipes. That's fine. Boom. And that gets us four transfer nodes. However, we are going to need some more pipes. So let's go ahead and make some more of those as well. Boom. No, that would, that would have been far too easy. We never have enough flipping uh, stone for this stuff. Uh, let's see. Can we make that? Yes, we can. We'll make a few of you. Do we have any glass whatsoever? Not really. <laughs> we never do. Do you have any cobblestone? We should do. Yeah, we've got 42 cobblestone. Let's go ahead and take some of that. Throw it into the sag mill, and that's going to turn that into sand, which we can then smelt in the alloy smelter into, into glass. And we'll do that in a second. We're also going to need a bowel. Do we have a spare bowel? We have a ton of spare bowels. So, the way that this is going to work is we are also going to need a packager, I believe it is. The one that we're using outside for our sugar cane, which is not that guy at all. Let's go to factorization. I cannot quite remember the name of the block. It is this guy here, the stamper. And you'll see why we're going to use this thing in just a second. That's another piston and another crafting table. And boom. Nice. So this is going to craft a single item. Are you done? Wow. I love adding the um, the capacitors to these things. They make them so much faster. It's lovely. Let's go ahead and throw you in there. That's going to make you faster. Again, we've kind of said it before. It does waste a bit of power, which is a bit of a waste. But, but it's fine. It's fine. We'll get rid of you, and we'll get a couple more pipes, and we should be good to go. So, let's do this. Let's go. Can we type? <sighs> Boom. And we'll go ahead and take two of... Oh, really? Really? Ah, oh, no. Please tell me we've got some left. Yes, we do. Woo! Okay. That's annoying. Flipping neck. I completely forgot that, uh, again, heads up, guys. You cannot use quite clear glass from factorization with stuff from extra utilities. It doesn't like it. It doesn't work. You've got to go the long way about it and smelt the grass. Uh, the grass. The glass the old-fashioned way. Uh, this is a good argument for a pulverizer. Uh, if we got a pulverizer up and running, we could probably uh, get this to work. Is there any way to transform this? Can we, like, make normal glass out of it? Um, I don't think we can. That would be very nice, though. We can make... Stained glass, but again, it doesn't look like we can actually do anything with it. We can use a sag mill to turn it back into sand, which is kind of cool. Uh, and then we could smelt it in here if we really need the glass. But for now, two should be enough. We should be able to just go one and two. And I think, ah, oh, no, I'm fairly certain we're going to need at least one more. Okay, I'm going to throw you in there. That's going to get us a sand. 
Let's put you in there. And while this is going, let's go ahead and get started. So what we're going to have is we're going to have our transfer node on the top of the adjustable chest right through in here. Let's quickly eat some bread so that we don't die. There we go. So we're going to have a transfer node pulling the stuff out of here uh, when we want it. On this side over here, we're going to have a barrel that's going to slowly fill up with the soybeans. And then over here, we are going to have a stamper, which is going to take some of the soybeans and is going to turn them into soybean seeds. Because the problem that we have with these is because we can plant both soybeans and soybean seeds... We, when we pull, like, by default, this transfer node is going to pull out everything. It's going to pull out the soybeans and the soybean seeds, which is not what we want, because that's going to mean that nothing gets planted. Which I hopefully, hopefully doesn't require any glass. Please. Yes, it doesn't. Good. Okay, we'll take you. This should be done. We can get some more pipes. Thank you. And... Here we go. Boom. Nice. 16 should be more than enough. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to whitelist the soybeans on this item filter. And what that's going to allow us to do is send only the soybeans out. So let's take you... And then let's go ahead and whitelist like that and throw you in there. So now if we throw this in here, it automatically gets pulled out into the transfer node. Oh, it should have done. Let's grab like a, uh, let's, in fact, let's, let's plant them and let's like burn me all these up. If I was to burn me all of these up, what it should do is it should go ahead, pick them up and send them through into the transfer node. Now, when you break these, uh, these soybean crops, you only ever get soybeans. You never get soybean seeds. So... If we were to look in here and in the transfer node, you can see we now have some soybeans in here. So what we're going to do is, because this is smack bang in the middle and it's equal distance from here and from the other side as well, what's going to happen is as soon as things come out of that transfer node, half of them are going to go to the barrel and half of them are going to go to the stamper. And what that means, if we do this real quick, where they go to the stamper, it's going to go ahead and stamp those straight back into soybean seeds, which we are then going to go ahead and pump back around under into the barrel. We might have to, uh, to move that water, but that's fine. We'll move it back around into the barrel, which we can then go ahead and plant and are not going to get pulled out because they are not soybeans, which is kind of cool. And that means that half of the crops are going to go back into making more crops, which is good because for every one we plant, we get four back or three or four. So we get at least double, which means this will constantly work and we will end up with more than enough. And then the other half is going to end up in here. And then it's going to go through uh, to these pressers, which we'll get to in just a second. So let's really quickly see if we can get this done. Do we have our shovel on us? We have an excavator. That's a bit excessive. Uh, I would like a wireless access terminal. That'd be really nice. So we can sort of uh, go ahead and start accessing our stuff in the ME system wirelessly. But uh, that is for another episode. Let's do this. I don't think it doesn't seem like we need water just yet uh, if we do we might invest in some sprinklers from open blocks that probably be a good idea uh, let's get rid of you like that and then we'll just throw on one of i think we can do this is that gonna pull out the slide beans it is and then we can go like this boom 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 ah and that's where we run our pipes <laughs> okay so you get the idea that's gonna go back and i'll fix that in a second let's go ahead and start turning this quite clear glass back into normal glass so we can make some more of those pipes so we'll put you in there uh, what i'm gonna do guys is i'm gonna go ahead and actually cut away here because i'm gonna go uh, make some more of these pipes set that up and what i'll do is i'll start making a bunch more soybeans and we'll be back in a second to show you what i need to do with these pressers because I need some more transfer pipes uh, in order for that to work. So I'm going to go do that, guys, and I'll be back in a second. Okay, so a little while later and a bunch of bone meal used, and we have ourselves a pretty much full, apart from this little section up here, farm of soybeans with the stamper, turning them back into uh, soybean seeds and sending it back through to the adjustable chest. Now, you'll still notice that all of the dirt is not hydrated, and you'll also notice that I've thrown some blocks down uh, in a little square fashion there. And the reason for that is because we are going to go ahead and make some sprinklers. Sprinklers are a block from open blocks, which both hydrate and, if you put bone meal in them, can speed up the growth of, of the crops around them. So, in order to make these sprinklers, they're fairly easy. Uh, a little bit iron intensive, but that's fine. Uh, sprinklers. 
these guys here. We need four of these. So that means four more redstone torches. One, two, three. I have a feeling we don't have four sticks. Oh, we do. Beautiful. Okay, throw you in there. And boom. Oh, God, that goes two. Ah, oh, we were so close. More iron bars. We have used so much iron today. And then three, four. Nice. So we got four sprinklers. And now, in order for these things to work, they have to be on top of a tank from open blocks that is filled with water. So the tank, fairly easy to make once you have obsidian. It's just some glass panes and some obsidian. So we'll take, like, all of these. <laughs> we'll throw that into there. And then we'll do something like this. Shift, left, click. And one two that gets us four of those nice so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put these down beneath those blocks that i placed down in the square fashion in our little farming room so something like this we're running a bit weirdly but that's fine let's get you and then we're going to get rid of this we're going to put down a tank with a sprinkler on and again get rid of you tank sprinkler and again you tank make sure you do it from the right direction otherwise there'll be some facing the wrong way uh, and then again you tank sprinkler doesn't matter which way they face by the way it, it, i just like them to look the same and each sprinkler has a radius of four. it can go for four out from where it is much like a normal water source would so this one will cover one two three four and one two three four this one will do the same that one will do the same and that will do the same there is a bunch of overlap in the middle here but uh, four was the minimum that we needed in order to get i think maximum coverage of everything so now what we need to do is we need to fill up the tanks with water constantly and to do that what i've done is i've gone ahead and done the same setup that we have uh, quite a few times over the base now and that is basically two water source blocks a tra liquid transfer node with a, a world interaction upgrade in it which means that it's constantly going to be pulling that unlimited water source out and then all we need to do is do something like this boom boom already got all these pre-laid out and they should start to fill up with water there we go there we go. We don't want that connecting at all. <laughs> we don't want water in any of these. But now, look at that. Boom. And all the sprinklers are on. You'll see the ground slowly start to hydrate. And we can go ahead and throw the dirt back down like this. Boom, boom, boom. These things are going to go ahead and slowly fill up with uh, with these soybean seeds as they grow up. We can force them a little bit like this. And we should pretty much have a fully functional soybean farm. Uh, where at the moment, the plants are being harvested and planted by our adjustable chest. Some of them are sent this way to be turned back into seeds. And half of them are sent this way to be stored in this barrel. And I think with that, guys, we've gone on for quite a while here. I'm going to end the episode there. What we'll do next time is we'll come back and I'll show you how all of this, in combination with potatoes and the loaded jacket potato, is going to turn into power yes it's gonna turn into a pretty significant source of power for our base but with that guys thanks for watching if you did enjoy the video be sure to like and i will see you guys next time Bye bye